Hi, today we're starting section 9.2, which is solving trigonometric equations algebraically. Last class we solved them graphically. Today we'll be looking at solving them algebraically. For most of these equations, we'll want to move all of our trigonometric functions to one side. We'll then use our cast rule to solve if our equation equals a fraction. However, if our equation equals negative one, zero, or one, we can utilize our knowledge of our graphs of sine, cos, and tan to help us get our answer. Now, so for some review with the cast rule, our C is in quadrant four, A is in quadrant one, S is quadrant two, T is quadrant three. So for where A is, all ratios are positive. Where S is, sine is positive, which means cosine and tangent are negative. T means tangent's positive. but it means that sine and cosine ratios are negative. And this last quadrant where we have a C, cosine is positive. And sine and tangent are negative. What you'll notice is each ratio is positive in exactly two quadrants and negative in exactly two quadrants. Now we'll utilize this stuff to start solving questions. So first example, solve seven plus two sine x equals four sine x plus five from the domain negative 360 to zero. So first thing I would do is combine like terms. So I'd subtract two sine x from both sides. And then I might as well move this five to the other side. So that gives us two is equal to two sine of x. We can then divide both sides by two, and we have one is equal to sine of x. Now, if this one equaled one, which like I said, if we have something equaling one, zero, or negative one, we can use our knowledge of sine and cosine graphs to solve. So I'll just quickly draw out what our graph of sine looks like. So we can see for one period of sine, our graph looks like this. It's at its maximum here. However, our domain says we want to be from negative 360 to positive zero, where this is a positive angle. So we also extend this the other way. So we've done one full cycle in each direction. Now we know one full cycle is 360 degrees. So from here to here would be negative 360 degrees. Halfway there would be negative 180. And halfway between these, where our maximum value of one is, is negative 270 degrees. So our x in this case equals negative 270 degrees. Next example, solve cos 3x equals negative 1 over the domain from negative 2 pi to 0.
So this one also equals negative one. And we know that essentially if we do our graph of cos, we start our maximum value of one, go down to our value of negative one, and then back up to positive one. Now this first one was at positive pi. However, we want our distance to negative two pi. So if we look at this, we are at negative one here. So that would be at a location of negative pi. Now we have a these two peaks are exactly one period apart, so that's two pi. Now that's for our version where we have not compressed it horizontally, which this flea is going to do. So what that flea is going to do is it's going to take this value and divide it by flea. So our first answer will be negative pi over flea. Now, because it's periodic, it could have more than one answer where we're negative one over this domain. So therefore I need to figure out my new period. So my period is equal to two pi over my B value. So in this case, that's two pi over three. Now I know if I add two pi over three to this, I'll end up larger than zero, so that won't be an answer. So what I'll do is I'll go in the opposite direction. So I have X is equal to negative pi over three minus two pi over three. So that would be negative three pi over three, which is negative pi. Now we still haven't reached our negative two pi, so we'll continue doing this. So we've got x is equal to negative pi minus two pi over three, which gives us negative five pi over three. Now I know if I subtract another two pi over three, that will be larger than negative two. So our answers are x equals negative pi over three, negative pi, negative five pi over three, And those would be our answers within this domain. Okay, next one. We've got solve two cos squared x equals one over the domain from zero to two pi. So first thing I would do is get the cos function on its own. So to do that, we take each side and divide it by two. So we've got cos squared x equals one over two. We then want to get rid of a squared, so we take the square root of both sides. So we have cos x equals, whenever we take the square root of a number, we have a positive or negative number. So we've got plus or minus. We can take the square root of one, which is one, over the square root of two, which is root two. Now, because cos is plus or minus, that means it's going to be in all four quadrants. Because if we look at cast rule, a positive version of cos is going to be in this quadrant and this quadrant, and a negative version of cos would be in this quadrant and this quadrant. Now, looking at this, you should recognize this from your special triangles. So our adjacent, because cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, our adjacent is one over our square root of two. You should recognize this as our special triangle that's 45 degrees, also pi over four because we're dealing with in radians. Now, each of these is going to have the same reference angle of pi over 4. So we actually have to find our overall angles. So this first one is just going to be pi over 4 because in quadrant 1, our reference angle and our angle are the same. In quadrant 2, this one here, we know from here to here is pi, but we're short by pi over 4. So we have x is equal to pi minus pi over 4, which gives us 3 pi over 4.
this next one here, we've gone pi, but we've done an additional pi over four. So we have x is equal to pi plus pi over four, which gives us five pi over four. This last one in quadrant four, we're almost all the way around, which would be two pi, but we're short by pi over four. So we've got x is equal to two pi minus pi over four. Which would be seven pi over four. So overall, if we write all of our answers out, we have x is equal to pi over four, three pi over four, five pi over four, and seven pi over four. Okay, and that's a that's the thing is if we have an equation with a trigonometric function to a second degree, so for example, sine squared, cos squared, or tan squared, and another function of degree one, so sine, cos, or tan, we can factor our quadratic or use a quadratic formula to help us solve. So for example, we've got cos one equals one minus three cos squared x over the domain from negative pi to positive pi. So first thing I would do is move everything to one half equation. So I'd add three cos squared to both sides. So I've got three cos squared x plus cos x minus one is equal to zero. Now, if I was to product some factor, I'm probably not gonna find something because I need something that multiplies to three adds to one. So at this point, I would put in our quadratic formula. So with our quadratic formula, our A is our value with our squared term, so that's three. Our B is our value with our term that isn't squared, so that's gonna be a one. And our C is our constant value, so negative one. So instead of having x equals, because we have cos, it's gonna be cos x equals. And then we have negative B plus or minus a square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. We'll substitute our values in. So we've got cos x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 1 all divided by two times our a value, which is three. This will simplify down to cos of x equals negative one plus or minus root 13 over six. At this point, we won't get much further without using a calculator. So we'll put both versions of equation into our calculator. So negative one plus root 13 and then divide by six and negative one minus root 13 and divide by six. So what that gives us is cos x is equal to 0 0.4343. And we also get cos x equals negative 0 0.7676. What we'll do next is find the reference angles for each of these. So x is equal to cos negative one of 0 0.4343, which we want to make sure we're in radians because this is in radians. So that gives us 1.12. We'll do the same thing with this one. So we've got x equals cos negative one of, well, not use the negative part of this because that's just going to tell us what quadrants we're in. So 0 0.7676, and that gives us reference angles of 0 0.70. Oh, 
from here, we'll use each one of these. So I'll draw two separate coordinate grids, one for each cos function. And we'll use our cast rule for each one. For this first one, we had cos x was positive 0 0.434. Now, because cos is positive, that means it's in these two quadrants. So we have one angle here and one angle here. Now, we have to look at our domain, too. It says to go from negative pi to positive pi. So negative pi would be here, zero would be here, positive pi would be here. So we have this angle here, which is our value we came up with down here. So 1.12 and this, because it's below the axis and the same reference angle, it just be the negative version of that. We'll next do the other cos function. So we've got cos x was negative 0 0.7676. Now, because it was negative, we have to play in the quadrants where cos is a negative. So that would be this quadrant and this quadrant. And we had a reference angle of 0 0.7. Now, same thing, this is pi, negative pi. So going from here to here would be pi minus 0 0.7. which is 2.44. Now going this way would be negative pi plus 0 0.7. So that would give us negative 2.44. So we have four answers. We've got x is equal to uh, 1.12, negative 1.12, 2.44, and negative 2.44. Okay, so practice for this starts on page 637, numbers 4 to 14.